I know how to cook one meal, a steak. Not a good sign. <laughs> Not at all. Wow. Is all I have to say. I think we should cook him a steak, Josh. Yes, yeah, you guys should. Let us cook you a steak, brother. We would love to do it, okay? And we'll kiss you. I don't want to like the good steaks. So you don't like the good steaks because you're afraid that you're gonna like the good steaks. Chef Ryan Sow here, not your typical chef, owner of Mission Sandwich Social, located in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, winner of Beat Bobby Flay season one. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Guga. We savagely critique Osmond Gold's $2 steak. Before we go on with today's episode, I do wanna give a special shout out to my amazing patrons, Rich Acock, Amanda, and Jay Breezy. Guys, thank you so much for your support. You guys, along with all the patrons, really do make a difference on this channel. And with that out of the way, on to the reaction. What's up, everybody? Today I'm here with my good friend, Joshua Wiseman. I don't know what's about to happen. All I know is there's a computer screen here and I got the headphones in, so. We are gonna be reacting to a- Are they, are they sharing? a set of earbuds, that is friendship on another level because I would not share my ear, or I would not want to put anyone else's earbud into my ear. I think that's kind of gross. I do want to give a shout out to Guga though, and uh, this little sticker right there, huh? 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 So, if you guys didn't know about the sticker, when I went to collab with Guga in Miami, we did a sandwich uh, for my channel and we actually offered that sandwich for a limited time only at my shop, Mission Sandwich Social, and every order got a sticker, a limited edition sticker, one of which is now on Guga's laptop, and I am very proud to see it every single time he has that laptop I'll open to do a reaction video, so a little prideful moment, but this is not about me. This is about Osmond Gold, somebody I don't know anything about. This wouldn't be Chef Brian Sow's Pro Chef React if I didn't react to someone else reacting. So here we go again. <laughs> now, I would say that steak is the most important meal of the day. The most important meal, maybe of the month or a week, but every day. Steak That's a lot. That's a if lot I of did, steak. I probably would be happier. <laughs> Usually whenever I get up, around 2 to 3 p.m. He looks like somebody who would get up at 3 p.m. Is he a gamer? Yeah. I was gonna say, this is either the life of a 12-year-old boy or a streamer, <laughs> one of the two. Uh, it's about, looks like a little, a little past 1 a.m. And so this is prime steak time. Is that the prime steak time, everybody, to no. cook at 1 a.m.? What do you think, Josh? Any steak you're getting at 1 a.m. is not coming from a good place. <laughs> now, I don't like to- Oh my God, <laughs> this video's great. I have to agree with everything they said. It, it, you know, a steak every day, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of cholesterol right there. Uh, I definitely wouldn't do a steak every day. Would love to do a steak every day. I do agree, he looks like a gamer and uh, someone who only cooks a steak, I would agree with Josh, has got to be a 12-year-old boy or a gamer. I have no idea who Osmond Gold is. I didn't even bother looking into him, to be quite frank. I'm sure we are in for a good... Also, you know, seeing a video titled My $2 Steak it just didn't really intrigue me. Then again, that hasn't stopped me from watching other disasters. Let's... The good steaks. Now, the reason for that is not because I don't like the good steaks. It's because I don't want to like the good steaks. So you don't like the good steaks because you're afraid that you're going to like the good steaks. I can just tell that this guy likes to make himself feel emotional pain. <laughs> this is a meal I usually make for myself multiple times a, a, a week. Uh, $7. Multiple times a week. $7 for four steaks. $7 for four steaks. I'm going to say that's about a pound and a half, right? So seven dollars a pound and a half. That's so 16, 16 ounces in a pound. That's twenty four ounces. So uh, seven dollars divided by twenty four ounces. That is twenty. Oh my god. <laughs> that is twenty nine cents a pound. Is that really? Now I'm. Okay, let's even say it's a one, that's definitely a pound of steak there, right? So $7 divided by 16 ounces, that's still 43 cents a pound. That is definitely something like Chuck. 100% agree, that is dirt freaking cheap. That is pro <laughs> Okay, let's keep watching. I'm gonna stop here, let's keep watching. As with any good steak, what do you eat with the steak? <laughs> Great question. You eat a potato. Something's not right. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna find out. This is how I cook a potato, is I take the fork and I stab the sh out of the potato and okay. I put the in the microwave. Just put 20 big potatoes in the oven and, and, and refrigerate the rest, okay? You're welcome. Although uh, microwaving a potato is a legit technique. It actually 
it, it does work. My mom's done it, uh, did it all the time when I was growing up. She would saran wrap it and just throw it into the microwave until it was soft. She also did that with, uh, with corn on the cob <laughs> and it worked. I haven't, I haven't done it. I gotta be honest, I haven't done it since I moved out. Um, you know, I would just like feel too ashamed. I gotta roast it or whatever, you know? Gotta use proper culinary technique. Don't use the microwave. But yeah, no, it's it's legit. It works, it works. I, I'm not gonna knock him for that. You know, I, I'm also not gonna knock him for poking holes into it. Uh, you know, that works too. You don't have to, in my opinion. You don't have to, but it works. It definitely facilitates more even cooking, but I don't think uh, the means justifies the end. You know, it's not like it's going to be that much better of a potato because you poked it a few times before you started cooking it. So anyway, uh, you put the butter on the pan. No, explain, no, 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 no. Why we not, did not put butter on the yes. pan first? Tell you us. Can't sear and also have butter in the pan immediately because it's going to burn before you yep. get any color on the steak. Yep. It's going to smell bad. It's going to smoke up everywhere. Yep. It could catch on fire. I've seen it catch on fire before. This is a Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. I don't blame him because I can't say that either. Say I say Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Do you say Worcestershire? Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Okay, don't make me do this. Of Worcestershire sauce. They were out of the uh, the craft Worcestershire sauce, which is like literally like way cheaper. So I had to buy this Bro. He literally has the best Worcestershire yeah. sauce money can buy. Yeah. It's all the same. Who gives a f <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly timed. And uh, also we get lemon pepper. So those lemon pepper? Lemon pepper. No, no, no. I, I would prefer that on chicken, but then again, I'm a salt and black pepper guy for my steaks. It's very thin. Yeah, very thin. Beef curtain right there. In Miami, we call it palomilla steak. It's not a tender cut. It's not a great cut, and uh, it's very difficult to cook this medium rare, let's say. Yeah, something that thin, you are not getting medium rare. It's, it's going to be well done every single time. There's just no way. It's not going to happen. By the time you cook one side, by the time you even get a hint of a sear, it's gonna be well done. And that's only on one side. By the time you put it on the other side, it's, it's shot. However, for something, for a cut of beef like this that is so cheap, 99.9% .9 of the time it is a, uh, you know, is one of the tougher cuts, the more undesirable cuts. That's why they're cheaper. And the and if you are going to cook it on a high heat method, the only way that it's going to be edible, cooking a cheap cut of tough meat on a high cooking method is to slice it thin and or if you got a thick piece to tenderize it with a mallet or something like that otherwise it's, it's you're, you're gonna have a hard time even cutting it to me there is no bad cut of meat as long as you know how to well no that's not true overall <laughs> There's no bad cut of meat as long as you know how to prepare it. Now, generally, tougher cuts of meat, you don't want to go for a high heat cooking method. Those you want to go low and slow, thus something like stews or barbecue are the better way to go with something like that. But some people still want to have a steak. They can't afford a ribeye. They can't afford a strip. They can't afford a filet mignon. All these cuts are very tender from the get go, thus, they are better for high heat cooking methods, meaning a sear on a cast iron pan or a sear on a grill, something like that. You don't wanna do slow, low and slow cooking methods with those particular cuts because it's quite frankly gonna be a waste. Uh, I'm about... No sound whatsoever, <laughs> no sound in the pan. I guarantee you, you did, he didn't have the mic next to it, but when he put that in the pan, it probably was like, it sounded like this. <laughs> I, I don't think it's even on. Is it on? Like, is the butter even Oh, it's on? very good it's observation. It's on the knob. It, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, got you it. Just, again, 30 seconds or a minute, what is it, bro? If your pan is not sizzling, you're not doing it right, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, for a high heat, high heat cooking method, you want to hear that pan sizzling immediately. Uh, which he is not doing. Why do you want to sear? Like, what's the why? And the real reason for the why is increased depth of flavor. When you put this steak onto a cold pan, it's going to gradually warm up. But another thing that's going to happen is that it's going to slowly draw out the moisture, but not evaporate it. So then what's going to happen is the moisture is going to get drawn from the protein. It's going to dry it out, but it's also not going to evaporate. So essentially the steak is going to boil in its own juices. That may sound like a good thing, but it really isn't. For high heat cooking method, you want to go in fast, maintain as much of the 
juices within the steak and really only aiming to sear, thus removing the moisture from the outside of the steak. So to get the color for increased depth of flavor. Hope that makes sense. Today or not. Ah, oh, it's fine. If I'm hungry later on, I'll just eat another cookie. Did he say if he's hungry, he'll eat another cookie? I, th I think we should cook him a steak, Josh. Yes, yeah, you guys should. Let us cook you a steak, brother. We would love to do it, okay? And we'll kiss you. You'll keep that part for you. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> I know your wife. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll show you guys what we're doing here. That is <laughs> No cursing on my channel, Oh, bro. sorry. That's <laughs> That's <laughs> If I walked in and I saw that, I'd be like, oh my God. And I just like, you know, I, I got to say something. Him putting the butter first, putting the butter on a cold pan and then the steak and not having it sizzle right away may actually work to his benefit in, in a really unintentionally f***ed up way. Being that, remember what we said that you don't want to sear with butter in the beginning. Well, actually Josh said this, you don't want to sear with butter in the beginning because the butter can burn and get smoky and create off flavors. But the steak is so thin, probably by the time the butter browns, those milk solids in the butter are going to be brown, increase depth of flavor and attach itself to the steak. And by the time it's done, it may actually work out. I wanna tell you about my mailing list that I've just started so you can keep up with all things Chef Brian Sal. You get updates on the latest and greatest, but more importantly, generally, it's a sneak peek of what's to come that I don't plug right away on the channel. For example, those on the mailing list got to know about my new channel, Chef Brian Sal Raw first. Plus you'll get exclusive offers like maybe some upcoming collab merch with maybe somebody named Frenchie. Most importantly, your data is safe. It is not being used for anything else except for updates about this channel and what I got going on. Be sure to visit the link in the description below and sign up to the mailing list today. Honestly, that is a sad steak, everybody. The steak has literally died inside and it's uh, asking for help. So I put, I, I put this on the steak. Oof. There we go. No salt, just that seasoning, huh? I guess it has salt in the seasoning mm. is my guess. Oh, he's putting two types of spices. Quick note, if you're ever gonna season something, never season it in the pan yeah. unless it's only salt. But if, it, if it's not, what's gonna happen? It's gonna burn. Yep, 100%. I mean, whatever made it on the steak, I guess may not, but. But also the pan is not hot. I, I, but everything they're saying is is correct. I I am agreeing with them as far as cooking fundamentals a thousand percent correct but osmond gold clearly doesn't care <laughs> it's in the pan right now the 85 percent of it's in the pan yep but oh actually i should mention everything they're talking about is correct if if osmond gold was using the correct cut of beef right if he used something like a ribeye a filet or a strip steak right so in some ways Osmond Gold, not knowing his fundamentals, has kind of worked in his favor in preparation of his $2 steak. Wow. Also, I just realized I calculated earlier, I calculated by ounces, so 49 cents per ounce. I'm 16 ounces, that's, yeah, yeah, $7, yeah. So $2, one steak, yeah, about, there's four steaks. Yeah, $2, that's totally correct. I was just calculating it by the ounce, 784 for a pound of beef for Chuck. Actually, now that I think about it, that's kind of expensive for that, right? A pound of Chuck for 7.84. Yeah, that's expensive. That's kind of expensive now that I think about it. He's overpaying. Now one steak is $2 because it's so damn thin still. Terrible, terrible cut of beef. I about to see God. I, I, I get steaks medium to medium well. Oh, you see, you see, you see exactly what I was talking about. He didn't start in a hot pan he started in a cold pan, and then as the pan slowly heated, you know, got hot, it slowly heated up the steak and drew out the moisture, and now it's boiling in its own juices. But at home, I only cook steaks well done. It's so wrong that I'm like confused on how to judge it. Yeah, it, it's it's not easy to uh, like be critical because everything is wrong. <laughs> yeah, there's so there's so many layers to what's bad about it, and also like, well, how thick was the steak? Even if you get this medium, it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it it no longer is the steak is dead. Oh man, that's a good ass steak, man. I mean, you know, you know, it's each their own. I apologize, everybody. That does not look good to me. Uh. Osman Gold truly, truly, truly finds the beauty in everything. <laughs> 
This steak was well done, like before it went into the <laughs> Good quick meal. Now, usually I eat steaks about six times a week. I thought I eat a lot of steaks and he eats more steaks than me. How many times a week do you eat steaks? Here? I think steak is a special thing to an extent. Mm. So if you I agree. eat it all the time, it loses its specialness. But, you know, if it's a nice thick juicy steak, you know, a couple I, times a month. I agree with you because not everybody eats steaks every day. And whenever you eat steaks, you should treat yourself. You should get something nice. Should feel I better. agree. Yeah, That's how I treat it. Like that one. I get steaks, I get potatoes, I get cookies. His diet is very, very, very nice. Steak, potatoes, cookies. That's it. Honestly, That's he's actually surprisingly like in pretty decent shape. I don't yeah. know how. Uh, you know, I, people ask me like, what do you do now that you, uh, you, you know, you, your, your stream does well and you make money? Uh, well, I, I, these paper plates, there's only like 30 of them and it was like $5. They're, they were, they're trying to save the planet, man. So uh, you, get the, you get the paper plate here. You put the steak right there on the plate. <laughs> the steak is so thin you can barely see it. Yeah. It's just like, because it's a thin paper plate, right? And despite that, it's disappearing inside the plate as if it were a bowl. So you put the potato right here also on the plate. <sighs> and uh, do I have a knife? Oh, yeah, yeah, I need to get another knife. Uh, I'm going to just cut this open real quick just so you guys can see what we're all about. And so you cut that potato open. Wow, it worked. The microwave does work really well for potatoes. And so you see this right here. This is what, what, what we eat uh, pretty much every day. I'm a simple man. I live a simple life. I like steak and potato. Whoa, he does what to the potato? Potato. Wow, is all I have to say. Holy cow. You know, uh, I was saying earlier, 784 is pretty expensive. You know. When I go to Restaurant Depot, I am paying, I, you know, the prices that I can see. So I'm paying about $9 a pound for flank steak. And then, you know, generally you take that and you times it by three and that's how you cover your margins, right? You know, you're paying for the raw product, but your overhead, like your utilities, your insurance, and then the other, uh, your rent. And then the other part is your labor. And then whatever's left over after that is your profit, right? So um, if if I have a $9, $9 uh, a pound per pound steak, then I need to be charging a minimum of $27. Uh, right? Is that right? Holy cow, did, did, did I do? Yeah, holy, whoo. <laughs> I thought I couldn't do basic multiplication. Anyway, so you're gonna need to charge a minimum of $27 for that steak. You know, if it's $8 for a pound, I'm guesstimating in that package was a pound of, uh, of beef, uh, then divide that by three, that's gonna be $2.66. That's about right for a chuck steak, right? Because if I'm recalling what I saw last time for a chuck, a uh, piece of chuck. It was uh, somewhere between two to three or 350 per pound. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me, right? Supermarkets charging times three between to cover their labor and their and their overhead. So yeah, great video. Great. I got to uh, check this out. Uh, finally check it out and got to check it out with, you know, it, in, in spirit with Guga, uh, my homie Guga. By the time you guys are watching this, Frenchie and I would have already gotten back from Miami because we had just finished collabing with Guga. So before we close out this episode, I do want to say thank you to all of my amazing patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your support. And remember, for the rest of you, by becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new episodes, uncensored extended versions of certain episodes, and most importantly, patron exclusive content. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And remember, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make you stronger. With that said, I'm Chef Brian Sao, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.